received a question about healing. It says the following. It's, um, the question reads like this. It says, my name is Ristavo. I have been pondering and searching for answers on the topic of healing. What I would like to know is, are we supposed to pray for every sick person we come into contact with or should it be something we need to hear from the Lord about because Jesus said these signs shall follow them which believe but he also said that I can do nothing unless I hear it from my father. I'd like to hear your take on this. You know this is a very important question. Many people have been terribly condemned by the healing ministry because they feel that the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out de demons, they'll drink something deadly, snakes can bite them, they lay a hand upon the sick and they will recover, they'll speak with other tongues and so forth. And the way we've read it is that this is what you must go and do. You must go and heal every sick person. You must go and pray in tongues and you must do all those things, otherwise you're not a believer. That is just the way the human mind that is flooded by law and works righteousness uh, receives anything the Lord says and that is just a typical example of how you can only see what you believe. If you believe that you are saved by your works you will immediately read that as a commandment and what we need to do in order to have um, to be a proper Christian. Now the, if we go and look at the book of Acts the Bible says <coughs> clearly that the apostles prayed to the Lord in Acts chapter 4 after they were threatened with their lives. Now you must remember the apostles preached the resurrection. Very important. They preached the resurrection. And what I mean by the resurrection is they didn't preach who of you want to go to heaven when you die. That is not what they preached. What they preached was um, that Jesus Christ conquered death and He's coming back and He promises and we can be part of His kingdom which is the kingdom of the resurrection or the kingdom of power um, unto life and we shall be raised from the dead by Jesus. That is what they preached. And then, um, just after they preached that, the, they were call, uh, called in by some authorities and said, and threatened, said, we're going to kill you. You must stop to preach this message of the resurrection. Which is actually funny, you know, it's like, we're going to kill you. But these dudes, they've got power over death, you know, and their king has got power over death. And the apostles were frightened by that and they prayed the Lord and this is what they prayed. They says, Lord, behold their threatenings. This is Acts 4 from verse 30. It says, Lord, behold their threatenings and stretch forth your hand to signs, wonders and miracles so that we can preach boldly. Can you see that they saw signs, wonders and miracles as something the Lord did and not something they were commanded to do to every sick person? So signs, wonders, and miracles are signs of the resurrection. That is what it is all about. So how did it take place in the, uh, th through the apostles? It happened through the hands of the apostles and the preaching of the apostles. How? By the Spirit working with performing signs, wonders, and miracles. So if the apostles believed that miracles was just something they could randomly go and do, why would they pray and ask the Lord, to stretch forth his hand to signs, wonders, and miracles. If they, know, if they knew, as what most of the charismatic world today just assumes, um, that we must go and heal the sick. No. Uh, it was something, it was a supernatural sign, and the way it took place was by the Spirit that willed it in the hearts of people. In other words, people would preach, they would see people, they would see faith in their eyes, they would feel unction in their heart, and they would say, this is going to be a sign, a wonder, a miracle by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just as what you hear a prophetic word, or you get a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, and they prayed for the sick. And that's how it worked. And it normally goes, goes with a, a heart that wants to do it. And you will find certain people are more inclined to that. Because that is what they, where their heart is at. Other people are more inclined to teaching and prophecy and others... Um, you know, uh, love to pastor and all those kind of things. Remember, the Bible clearly says, do all pray in tongues? Are all workers of miracles? No. It is not so. Now, there are people that say that's just because they are not walking in full sonship and that they're walking with a, having the Spirit by measure. Now, I do believe that we cannot uh, bring the kingdom of God, which is the manifestation of immortality, 
into, into being through signs, wonders, and miracles. In other words, it, what I'm saying by that is even if you heal the sick, they're going to die again. You know, everybody Jesus ever prayed for has died eventually because that resurrection and those miracles are temporal. It is not the eternal. The eternal is in the return of Christ where everyone shall be healed. So is the gospel that it will be healing for everybody? Yes, um, that is the gospel. Healing for everybody in the resurrection. Perfection for everybody in the resurrection. But now we can have signs, wonders and miracles. And I do believe that as, as our hearts are open for this, we will see that. If we are antagonistic towards it, we will see less of it uh, or nothing. So let us have our hearts warm for signs, wonders and miracles and just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So I hope that is that answer helps you. Thank you so much. God bless.